G'day guys and girls and welcome to this webinar. It is a pleasure to have you here to teach you Excel Power Query and data cleansing along with my special guest and co-instructor Oz Dusselet who is an Excel MVP and author of Gorilla Data Analysis and an expert in this field. So thank you for taking your time out. It means that you want to improve your Excel skills and we are not going to let you down. In this next 60 minutes, we're gonna show you some tricks that is just gonna change the way that you use Excel and change the way that you interact and work with data. Now I have a special bonus for you at the end of the webinar. So stand by right at the end. I have a special attendee only bonus and gift and I'm gonna give it to you right at the end of the webinar. All right, now let me pass you on to Oz, um, who is in Portland, Oregon, USA. I'm actually in Spain at the moment, so I'm gonna pass on the ball to Oz Dusselet. He's in Portland. He's in his underground studio, okay? At the moment, he's in his dark room, in his underground studio. He's waiting for you guys as we are speaking. I can see him there. He's got his funky hat on. So I'm gonna pass it on to you, and he's gonna start with a class He's gonna do a bit of an intro, go straight into the exercises, and then at the end, I'm gonna come in and do a couple of more exercises for you. Now, if you have any questions during this webinar, you have a chat box there and a question box, type it in there, type in there, and then I will be on standby to answer any questions. Okay, now, let's get straight into it. Okay, Oz, over to you, buddy. Thanks, John, and thank you for being here on this webinar. So I'm going to introduce myself and let you know what you're going to see in this webinar. I'm Oz Dussolet here in Portland, Oregon, moved here two years ago from Chicago, and I love living here in the Pacific Northwest. I am a Microsoft MVP, which means that I am one of 100 people in the world who's recognized by Microsoft as having skill with Excel and committed to creating community around Excel. And there again, that's why I'm here to help because we have to partner up in this battle against crap data so that we can end misery. I am author of Guerrilla Data Analysis, second edition. Bill Jellin, Mr. Excel, he wrote the original edition back in 2002 and he asked me if I would revise it for Excel versions 2010 and 2013. Before we get into getting transformed, I figured it's important to give you an overview of what you're going to see because we wind up in a different place that you may never have seen before if you aren't familiar with getting transformed. It does not operate like native Excel. First, let me point out that I'm using Excel 2016. And in 2016, in the data tab, there is a get and transform group. If you're using Excel 2010 or 2013, then you need to follow John's instructions on how to download that add-in, install it, and get that tab up in your ribbon in Excel. That's the first thing. Next, when working with Get and Transform, AKA Power Query, we build what's called queries. We can start building a query from a table, or we can start a new query from multiple sources, from a file, from another workbook, from a CSV, from a folder. We can pull from a database. Here is where we can combine queries. So let's get out of there. This data is in a table, so let's start a query from table. 
here is our query editor and here is our data and notice over here we have applied steps you'll notice that as I go through messing with this data these steps will start to grow it's recording everything that I do an example of something that we can do is take these email addresses and peel off the com gov co ca me tv let's peel those off and now in power query we've got to start thinking in entire columns you'll notice that I don't have another column here where I can write an if statement on row 2 in column B and see if there is a gov in that cell I can't I easily operate at the cell level in Power Query let's go ahead and split this column by delimiter and notice that some of these have more than one period we want to split this by the period we want to split it by this one in row one we want to split it by that period and notice in row two we've got two periods so we don't want to split by all of the periods and we can be precise in Power Query. Let's go here and our custom delimiter is going to be period and I don't want to split it at each occurrence. I want to split it at the right most. Okay. Now you can see that it didn't split off this one between blue and green it didn't split off this one after fake email dot bogus it just split off the last one and notice we've got this split by delimiter I can click this gear to look at the details period rightmost delimiter all right. Next, we could do some filtering. Let's go up here and filter out anything that's calm. Okay. And notice filtered rows. Now, there are a lot of functions that we can use in this ribbon home transform add column and we'll see some of those in the examples that are coming up but right now what we can do is bring that back into native excel because we can't do any analysis from here all right we got to get it back into native excel can close and load I'm going to click this arrow to show you something. We can close and load it to as a connection only or as a table and it's defaulted to show it as a table in a new worksheet. So I'm going to go ahead and load it that way. And here is our data. And notice that we have a query right here. And that is what brought us this information. Something else you should know about Power Query is that you can edit a query. Let's go back. I'm going to click on here, edit. And let's say that I wanted to filter by something else. I wanted to filter out the dot me. Okay, 
So now com is back, ME is gone. I can close and load and this updates. Another thing that's interesting about getting transform is we can refresh a query when we get new data. So let's say that we discover that Vanessa Coley's age is wrong. Let's go back to our original data and make a correction on the name that she is 46, not 26. And Mariah is actually it ends with an H and her middle initial is C. We can go over to our query, right click, refresh. Now look, Mariah H and the C period and Vanessa's age is now 46. All we had to do was refresh. One thing that's really cool about Power Query is if you get new data, you can just add it to your source and all of those recorded steps will be applied to any new data. Let's go back to the original data and scroll down. We've got Chuck Ambrose and Cynthia Grant. Add them. They get absorbed by the table. Let's go back to our result. And here is the query. Right click, refresh. There are Chuck and Cynthia. We didn't have to go back inside and modify the query in any kind of way. So that's a very quick overview of what Power Query or Git and Transform can do for us. Those are the areas that you will see as we go through. You saw the pane that has the queries in it. You can also get rid of that. Let's do that. Let's get rid of that in case I have to do some work and I don't want to look at that pain sitting there all the time I can then bring it back by going to data show queries and I can get it back very easily all right so that's all I wanted to show you and now let's get into it You've probably seen something like this before. You import data from a CSV or some other source and it doesn't convert into Excel very well. See, we have all these data fields. They're all in one cell and we have a name, an age, a group and an email address all in one cell in this big tall column. Our goal is to separate these fields and we'd like to dig out the email domain. So we would like to get this fake email right here. We'd like to get the fake email dot bogus out of here. Clip off the dot com, clip off the dot gov. And we'll see that there are some problems going on. Notice there's a blue dot green right here and then the not real dot co also notice Nanette doesn't have an age GG doesn't have an age either so this is a bit messy one way we could approach this would be text to columns and separate by this semicolon but then when we get down to separating out these periods in order to get at the email domain, we're going to have problems. So we're going to go straight into getting transform and clean this data up. All right, let's put this data into a table. 
format as a table. Let's make it orange. Table does have headers. OK. Now, in data from table, there is our query editor. Now, let's think about how we want to do this. First of all, we can go ahead and separate by the semicolon. Split column by delimiter by semicolon at each occurrence of the delimiter. OK. All right, now we can rename this as age and rename this group because we have that done. Now, let's separate the names. OK, we can separate that by the delimiter. Highlight this column. Split column by delimiter by the comma. At each occurrence of the delimiter. OK. Let's call this last name and first name and middle initial. Next, let's start to peel down that domain that we wanted to dig out. So first of all, we do it. We do want to keep the email address. Let's so right click and duplicate this column. And let's separate this by delimiter again. Right click, split column by delimiter, and let's split it by the at symbol. Custom at symbol. OK. We don't want this. Let's right click and remove this column. And now we want to split out this final piece, the co, the ca, the dot com. We have to be careful. We can't just split this by the dot because look at this, not dot real dot me. We want to leave, we want it to stay as not dot real. Let's go ahead, right click, split column by delimiter, and we're going to split it by the period at the rightmost delimiter. OK. Now we see everything split that was at the rightmost delimiter and we still have the ones that do have the period inside of them good we can right click remove this let's call this email and domain and we have everything that we wanted and notice also these steps as we went through were being recorded and we can go back and look. Let's look at renamed columns. That's the step we were at. That is before we duplicated the column here. And we can go look at other steps. All right. Rename the column. All right. Let's close and load this to the workbook. Close and load. Here is the information. And here is the query.
And if we wanted to put in a pivot table and separate people by group or get an average of the age by group, we can do a lot of things at this point. Okay. Now, one good thing about using Git and Transform is if we get more data, we don't have to go through that again. We don't have to go through that query again. All right, so we've got Francis, Juliet, Jean, Raffaella. All right, they're inside the table now. Let's go to our query result. Go over here, right click, refresh. It says 37 rows loaded now. Let's go down. There's Jean, Job, Jolie, Raffaella. And the three of them don't have an age. Let's check that out. Yep, none of the three have an age. And Jean Thibodeau, 22 years old. And that is how we parse text using Git and Transform. There are a lot more sophisticated ways of getting at this data, and we do show you that in the course. All right. Here we have two lists that are already in tables. These were training sessions, a Wednesday session, and a Thursday session. Here are the attendance lists. Both have a name. Then they both have the IDs. But this Thursday session shows a code. And then they capture different information. Here's a region and whether there's a retake or not. So Oren did retake this Wednesday session. And Thursday, they captured the status and whether this one was a retake. What we're interested in right now is who is on both lists. We don't care right now about the people who just attended Wednesday or just attended Thursday. Let's take a quick look. We have two people named James in this list. As far as what we can see right now, the list goes pretty far down. All right. And they don't even match up. OK. So we've got two people named James. and Here's a James over here who is R476. And here is James R476 here. What about this other James? And there are two Johns. Even if we did sort these alphabetically and try to eyeball it, that would become a hassle. So what we're going to do to find out who's in both lists is do what's called an inner join in Git and Transform. Let's get that started. The first step is to create queries on both of these lists. Data from table. There's a query editor, and there is our first list. And let's call this Wednesday. And I'm going to close and load this as a connection only. And there is the Wednesday query. See, Jody, Oren, Kevin, Jody, Oren, Kevin. Okay, let's make a Thursday query now from table. Call this Thursday.
from here, I can do my merge. Notice up here, we have our two queries. I'm going to merge queries. I'm going to click this triangle because I want to create a brand new query. I don't want to attach the Wednesday query on to my Thursday query. I want the Thursday query to stand alone. So I'm going to go to merge queries as new. And we see Thursday is already set up for us in here. Let's pull up the Wednesday query. And then we have to tell Excel which fields should be matched up. Code and ID. Then we go down and go enter. Only matching rows. OK. Now you see we have a third query here. And here are the fields that were in the Thursday session. OK, got the code, the status, retake status. Let's rename this as Thursday retake. And let's get rid of the question mark. Now I'm going to expand this because here is our Wednesday data. I don't want the name. I don't want the ID. I already have that. I want the region and the retake status. OK. Let's call this Wednesday retake. And we can even move this column over so that the retakes are side by side. Let's get Wednesday and Thursday in order. And this looks like the 26 people who were in both sessions. All right, let's close and load this to the workbook. And this is exactly what we were looking for. So Rhonda was in both sessions. When she was in the Wednesday session, that was a retake. She's in the North region and she is full time. Neum, neither was a retake. He's in the North session. He's in the North region and is full time. So there you go. Out of both sessions, these are the 26 people that are of interest to us. All right, I hope you enjoyed these awesome Power Query and Get and Transform tips that Oz just showed you. Now, in our next video, Oz is going to show you how to unpivot your data, and that is to convert a report into raw data so that it's useful for your analysis. And also, an awesome, awesome feature is how to consolidate multiple worksheets. He's gonna show you an easy way to consolidate data from multiple worksheets. This is gonna be massive. So if you have any questions about what we just went through, then write it down in the comment sections and then we are gonna get back to you straight away. Now, let's get into video number two and it's going to show on the top of the screen you can click on that or you can click on the description below to go directly to that video or you can just wait a couple of seconds and in the next slide we're going to have a direct link to video number two let's see you in there